Hi, my name is Shannon Roberts. I'm with Jacobs. I'm an urban designer, and I've been um, attending a lot of different conferences and talks on smart cities. And uh, DC itself is putting in a lot of smart infrastructure um, in, in our, our community spaces and our parks, which is basically embedding Wi-Fi routers um, within uh, light poles and things like that. Um, planners tend to tend to move in herds, so once one thing, the new thing is out, everybody does it everywhere. Um, I anyway, so I'm just wondering if there, what we can do to kind of educate and um, talk more about this yeah. as far as applying this technology universally. Thank you. That's an excellent question, and I think in our breakout sessions yesterday, it was kind of a universal theme that education is the crux of moving our society into a safer direction. As I said, I've had the privilege of working with some of the brightest minds on this, and we have formed a nonprofit where literally for the less, to, less than the cost of a movie ticket, you can take a schools and families course at wirelesseducation.org. We have prepared a second course for the corporate safety induction sector that's priced very, very low so that we can get the most people educated in the shortest amount of time. Each of the courses takes only a half an hour. So I think what this will do, one of my big lessons learned is I thought at every turn I would raise my hand and say, I think we have a problem here. And at every turn, not one person in my schools knew, not one person in my town knew. I met with our, our town manager. I met with our building inspectors. Nobody knows this issue is out there yet. So education, I think, must be the first recourse. And I really encourage everybody to go out to wirelesseducation.org, and then you can level set and have that conversation. And then come back to the table saying, no, now that we know this is extremely biologically hazardous, what do we know about our jobs and what we do? And let's start here. Because public policy, as we've seen with many other toxins, takes decades to catch up to the science. We're already decades into this, and now we're starting to see the cumulative damage to our population. I'm very pleased that Massachusetts is leading the nation now with eight bills to proactively address wireless radiation and public health. But who knows if those bills will even make way this session. So I encourage everybody, start where you are. Become educated. If you had a chance to see the film Generation Zap today, that's another very powerful tool that you can bring in for a screening into your home, into your office, into your community. It's been screened in libraries and town halls. It was even screened at Google this past fall, I think. Um, so many good learning tools out there, but who would even know to look unless you and I in this room today start this conversation? So thank you. To jump off of what you're saying about getting educated and smart cities as well, what Dr. Paul was talking about with 5G is what you're talking about with smart cities. And I hope everyone just want to help educate everyone that 5G is the new technology that is going to tie together the Internet of Things that will use and add to the electromagnetic environment and increase the frequencies we're exposed to. Um, as an example of what's happening here, um, and Environmental Health Trust, we've been tracking in different states these new bills that are being put forward to streamline, to make faster and easier the ability for companies to put the transmitters in communities. So you talked about Washington, D.C., which is a test city for 5G, and there are actually several test cities for 5G, and there are many people coming together getting educated and addressing their elected officials and asking for this issue to be addressed and for any new technology introduction to be safe and to halt the uh, 5G installations. So just here in Montgomery County, actually, on Tuesday, they are going to be introducing a new zoning book bill which I believe, uh, and many others believe, is going to make it easier to put these transmitters in front of uh, homes. They've already passed something so that it can be in commercial areas. And it's really important to, also I want to mention the letters. There are many letters written by scientists all over the world on this, on Environmental Health Trust, which is ehtrust.org. We have 
put them all together so that you can have access to them and you can share them with your fellow architects, builders, and it, they also really concisely put together the research and the issue for policymakers. So I invite you to continue on this, but it's very important. 